They're not designed to be recycled. Many different chemical compounds all smashed together. When devices got smaller and smaller, removing whole components became less and less possible. In the past few years, we've started to see a surge of devices that are fully modular and repairable, like this Framework 16 laptop, or even this SuperNote Nomad. While a lot of manufacturers are making devices even thinner and inevitably much harder to repair, these new devices provide you with a solid peace of mind over the longer course of ownership and much more personal customization. Whether it's because of future EU battery servicing laws that are being implemented or because it gives the end user more modularity over time, one thing's for sure, these types of devices are certainly better for the environment and ultimately you, the end user. E-waste will easily be the largest environmental disaster we'll see in our lifetime. Let's dive a bit deeper into these industry-wide issues and how these small companies are pushing us in the right direction. I put out a poll earlier this week asking which of these three devices my viewers are most interested in. So I'll be talking about them in that specific order. While I talk about them and discuss some of the ramifications these devices will have, I think it's important to keep in mind that about 50 million tons of electronics are discarded per year. For context, that's more weight than every airliner ever made. And only 17% of all electronics are properly recycled. Now, what's the downside of increasing the lifespan of products? Well, assuming a relatively modest slow in end users needs to refresh their phones, let's say four years versus three years, the potential drop in sales could cost manufacturers around 30% of annual sales on new models. Large tech companies are not known for taking massive drops in income on the chin and moving on. Apple, for example, made over 52% of its annual income selling 235 million iPhones last year. So talking about the framework a little bit, we'll get the Nomad out of here. This dock here, for example, is actually replaceable. So this actually slots out and I could slot this in if I wanted to use the internal graphics. This is a actual graphics card and under the hood here, if I pop the panels out, I'll show you kind of the configurability here, but it's pretty cool, right? These little tabs here, you can hear them open and then everything just basically slots off. There's little Raspberry Pi controllers in these that interface with the actual laptop and it's all reconfigurable. So this is kind of a numpad setup here for someone who's a righty maybe. The cool thing is I could just magnetically just pops off. I could actually swap it. So if you're a lefty, boom, put these back on. But what I wanted to show you under here is actually here. This is called the interposer. And you can see right here, that's actually where it slots in. And so within you know a minute and a half, I can actually change out the graphics card on a laptop. I mean, how cool is that? Like, this is what, <laughs> if you're a computer nerd, like this is what we've always dreamed of having in a laptop. And it's here now. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty insane that Narav and his team specifically, you can see these people have uh, made this come to fruition and they've done a remarkable job from my, my first impressions. I've had this for about a month now. Framework aims to increase the longevity of their products. It's clear that the company is aware that even they aren't creating products that are entirely sustainable. Let me dive a bit deeper into that. You're probably asking, how is the company that is fixing consumer electronics not sustainable? Well, simply put, they're making devices that will have an eventual end of life and therefore aren't sustainable at present. At present, no consumer electronics company is. What I find admirable, however, is that they're aiming to significantly increase the overall lifespan of parts and use recycled materials wherever possible. The first part of that statement is the important one. I'll let Narav explain it here as he does so very eloquently. Fundamentally, the simplest and most effective thing we can do to actually reduce the environmental impact of consumer electronics is make our products last longer, which is, you know, totally obvious. <laughs> like if you, if you can make your products last longer, you don't have to manufacture as many new ones, which means every part of that impact chain from resource extraction through energy consumption for silicon fabrication through 
energy consumption for transport through end of life and materials re-entering the environment potentially with environmental or human toxicity, all of that stuff reduces if you can make your devices last longer. And so our mm -hmm. focus, and we think that the best lever in consumer electronics broadly is making products last longer. And so we made that we are not sustainable page. It was really a reaction to the messaging that we're seeing everywhere else. And so our message is that we know we're not sustainable. Like we are still producing new devices. We are still shipping devices. We're still consuming materials that are limited across the environment. We are still, you know, at some point having to end of life some modules here that can't get reused into, you know, handhelds and cyberdecks. Uh, but as we think about what we're doing, we're really being very honest and open and transparent about the things that we believe in and that we're prioritizing, which is that repairability and longevity, and also the places where we know we can still do better, uh, which as an industry, we all do need to do. Framework being cognizant of these facts is quite important. It's a very simple solution, but one that has either been overlooked by other large companies or those that have tried failed in its execution. And so the opportunities are really endless here. Like, we'll admit this is, you know, more expensive than the equivalent just kind of built laptop that you could buy. But what excites me the most is stuff that's not even here yet. Like, these are, you know, some of the cool little accessories they have. These are uh, LED matrices. Um, actually, let's, uh... oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, ASMR for you. And you noticed earlier I had the trackpad to the side. So you can actually like, I can have the trackpad any way I want. If I want it centered with the actual uh, keyboard here, then I just pop in these spacers. And then click, boom, got a new laptop. <laughs> you got a new configurable like kind of way of uh, using it. And the bezel here will actually pop off as well. See, these uh, are programmable. You can do different things with them. So what excites me the most is actually, uh, here you go, is actually stuff that's not been built for this yet. So like they've actually teased MIDI keyboards, for example, if you wanna like you do like a piano type thing, like a music producer setup. The opportunities are really endless. Like they have teased ink displays and stuff. So if you could shift that over, have a little panel here with like vital information. It's just so cool. Also your ports. So like these, I've configured exactly the way I want. I got a HDMI, I got a USB. These two are um, the high-speed Thunderbolts. And then on the other side, I have a micro SD and I have um, a USB legacy and another USB-C. And then on the back, there's a display port that is uh, directly interfaced to the GPU. So. Yeah, I mean, props to Narav and their team. They've uh, done an incredible job. The only downside I can really see is like the price and the fact that it's a little bigger than most laptops. I mean, this is, is pretty wide. Uh, let me get my, this is an equivalent 16 inch laptop. So you can see it's, you know, it's a girthy boy. <laughs> like that's a, that's some extra space, but kind of like a little desktop replacement for me, so. Yeah, super cool stuff. If you have any questions on the framework, leave them below. I'm uh, going to be doing a bunch of content on this soon and do a long-term review as well. Now, on to the Nomad. So, you know, like devices like the Remarkable, it's, it's actually even four years later, it's still pretty incredible how thin this is and like how paper-like it feels. But Remarkable's been stalling on the actual third generation of this. I made a whole video of my like wishlist items. But I think it's probably due to the battery. Like they are gonna now have to comply to EU laws. And I think whatever kind of plans they have might have gotten kind of uh, all mixed up. And so they've been postponing. They're probably waiting for better display tech to come out too. Anyways, you know, something like this 4.7, they claim the world's thinnest tablet, which is, you know, really cool. And it is very, very thin. Like when you use it, it does feel very paper like, just like in this mode brings us to the Nomad, which 
is an incredible little device. And I think another thing, kind of like the framework, you do pay more for this. Like you can buy a Kindle, uh, something that's bigger and less limiting in terms of the real estate, but you are paying for part of the ownership experience where you're gonna be able to own this thing for like, I don't know, five, 10 years because you can change everything when you need to. But this is such a cool little device. It's actually probably my favorite device of this year besides the framework, these two. And part of it is because of their repairability, but also these pens, they feel fantastic. I really like kind of uh, thin tip and mechanical type pencils and stuff. And so Supernote and uh, their feel right screen has really done that very well. Like the, it's super hard to describe in person, but the feel on this versus the feel on this is night and day. Like this is, when this came out, it was very good. This is just hands down better. It grips better. You have fine point control, like this pen too, the push up, super fun. This little grip I added, this has easily become my favorite pen. Um, just so good for sketching. She added a drawing app, which is really nice. And so, you know, they're gonna come out with the A5X2, which is a bigger version like this. And then the A4X2, which is gonna be even bigger, kind of uh, just like a digital canvas. Um, and this company, they just really listen to their customers, kind of like Framework. You know, I see Framework put out polls all the time on their uh, Twitter and stuff, Supernote, everything I've relayed to them, they've taken into consideration. They have a whole Trello board that like you can see what their planned updates are. And it's just like a company for the people. Like Framework and Supernote are doing this super well and you don't see this in the industry. Remarkable, takes almost zero feedback from their users and the people that really are kind of well versed in this device. Rata is the company. And this is a super, super cool device. I'm absolutely in love with this. Really quickly, before I get into the Fairphone, I wanted to address some of the European Union laws that are aimed to strengthen the internal market and reduce environmental social impacts. They largely address battery replacement requirements, starting off loosely, but will tighten as time goes on as well. For example, batteries will need to be able to hold 83% charge after 500 cycles and 80% after 1,000 cycles. Recycled material percentages will need to increase as well. This is applicable to consumer electronics and will also have an impact on EVs. I can't speak to the Fairphone that well, but I've done some research into the company and it's very intriguing. They're on their fifth generation of phone and they've even made Fairbuds. So they're actually the first of these companies to kind of expand into multiple markets, the audio and the phone market, Supernote's just tablets, and Framework is just laptops right now. I'll definitely be taking a look at Fairphone more in a future video. While these devices aren't very commonplace yet, they're certainly a step in the right direction, and I'm excited to see how this repairable industry expands stemming from these companies and perhaps others. If you want to see some more content on these devices, you can check them out here. Ever since I took an engineering and public policy course in university, this topic is something I'm very passionate about. Thanks for watching.